Hi, I'm Ross Mayfield, investment strategy analyst at Baird, and we are back for another weekly update with our friends at Strategus. Today, I'm thrilled to be joined by Tom Titsuris. Tom is a managing director at the firm and head of their fixed income research arm. Tom, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me, Ross. Yeah, great to talk to you. Um, I want to start with kind of just your general outlook for long-term treasuries for for particularly the 10-year treasury you know we we all kind of stay up to date on what the fed is thinking and how they drive the short end of the treasury curve but you know the the longer end of the curve is more supply demand driven more macroeconomic driven so how are you seeing that a couple months into 2024 yeah well i think there are a few key drivers here of of what's moving and likely to continue to move let's just focus on 10-year treasury yields Supply, as you mentioned, supply is going to continue to be a headache for the bond market for years to come. Uh, 2024 is going to be no different from 2023. We're looking at one and a half to two trillion dollar deficits throughout the year. So supply is going to be a factor. It's going to be a bigger factor in the second half of the year as the market begins to grapple with whether or not the Treasury is going to increase its coupon auctions in 2025, which is very likely. But supply is going to be a, a, a really a headache for years to come. Another factor is going to be inflation, structural inflation. Now, in the near term, we should expect to see inflation dipping a little bit lower between now and June. And I do expect it to stabilize somewhere around, if we look at just headline CPI, stabilize somewhere around 25 to 3%. That's higher than we'd expect, but that's lower than where we were two years ago. But inflation is probably going to get sticky somewhere around that two and a half to three percent and very likely begin to rise early next year so that's going to be another headache for the bond market to deal with and and the other factor is what is the fed going to do earlier this year the consensus in the market was that the fed was not only going to cut rates aggressively in the first half of 2024 but was actually likely to begin to to taper or stall or slow its quantitative tightening Right now, that looks like neither of those is going to be the case. That is, at best, the Fed is likely to cut rates in June. That is our base case expectation. Quantitative tightening, a taper, very likely looks um, not possible anytime before May. And even that is questionable at this point in time. And even if they do taper or slow the pace at which the Fed is reducing the size of its balance sheet, it's likely to be a slowing of the pace, not a stop. So that means the Fed is going to continue to be pulling back from this bond market and potentially at a time when treasury supply is rising. So all of these would suggest that the long end of the curve maybe has some stability here for a few months, maybe a few quarters, but probably begins to rise by the end of the year. That's great context and, and a good look at the, the treasury side of the market. I want to shift and, and get your opinion on the investment grade, high yield, the corporate issuers. Um, Kind of a two part question. So one, what are credit spreads doing right now? Are they are they expressing any stress based on the macro environment? Um, and then two, you know, I wanted to get your opinion. You've written a little bit on the issues in office commercial real estate and some of the banks that are exposed to that, whether stress is showing up in their credit spreads or their probability of default. So if you could give us the high level picture and then maybe if you had any thoughts on commercial real estate in particular, I think I think that'd be really useful. Yeah, well, the high level picture here is that investment grade, both investment grade and high yield uh, corporate spreads are very well behaved. They're, for the most part, at historically low levels, not record lows. But for example, in the investment grade space, you're looking at IG credit spreads around 90 basis points. I believe the lowest we ever hit back in uh, the early part of 2000s and maybe late 90s was somewhere around a, maybe a 55 to 60 basis point. So we're, we're still a little bit above where the record lows were, but you don't typically see investment grade spreads below 100 basis points for a very extended period of time. So it can happen, but it's not common. So for the most part, the IG credit market is saying uh, things are fairly benign at this point. And it's a similar story in the high yield space. High yield credit, credit spreads are roughly around 300 basis points. And, and again, you don't typically see them below 300, but it happens from time to time. So both the IG and the, and the um, high yield market, broadly speaking, are showing no signs of stress anywhere. But if you were to dig a little deeper, you probably would find some levels of distress in certain sectors. And as you mentioned, Ross, commercial real estate might be the area where you'd see the most stress at this point in time, at least uh, um, uh, on a broad basis. 
uh, across multiple issuers. And I think that's what we're very likely to see for the remainder of this year. Commercial real estate is going to be a bit of a, a headache, another headache uh, for financial markets for years to come. I don't think we've really dealt with the problem um, of um, uh, devaluation in uh, assets and the impact it's going to have on credit markets. So this is something that's going to be a multi-year drag on earnings for financial firms that have exposure here. And there's going to be some pain to be felt in the REIT space as well. So that's where we expect to see some pain. And very specifically, when we translate this back to the credit markets, you do see very wide spreads in commercial mortgage-backed securities, particularly triple B commercial mortgage-backed securities, still close to 900 basis points of spread. Yeah, so certainly something to watch going forward. Obviously, a lot of pain there and, and potentially pain yet to come, both because of the post-COVID shift in how people and where people work and also the big move up in interest rates with the Fed looking to kind of keep the foot on the gas more than investors expected. So, Tom, we'll certainly have you back before then to talk through it again. But we want to thank you so much for your time today and uh, talk again soon. Uh, thank you. My pleasure.